This is your daily dose of all things royal. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex inaugurate a new online site today that most of us will never have occasion to visit. A good thing, it turns out. Jane Pauley talks with Meghan and Harry about their undertaking and the reasons behind it. Welcome back, my gorgeous, good-looking friends. Our 12 Fugazi public charity is at it again, turning your pain into the Harkle's profit. So today's Make It All About Megan on the Sunday morning show on CBS with Jane Pauley, the Harkle's unveil this new parent network of which our 12 Fugazi public charity really has just attached their name to it. In this video, we're going to look at the hypocrisy and call out the lies once again in Meghan Markle's attempt to play the victim and exploit these grieving parents to promote none other than Megan. In this scathing critical review, I'm going to rip this propaganda to shreds. So get comfortable. We're going to be covering a variety of topics such as body language, the use of words to gaslight the public, and putting on blast the hypocrisy. Let's begin here with Harry coming in like five steps behind Meghan. You'll notice a lot of times in this interview, Harry's body language towards Meghan is very hostile, as well as pointing away from her. He literally cannot stand looking at her or listening to her. Better known as Harry and Meghan are definitely big huggers. Oh, of course Megan is a hugger, but only when the cameras are around. Look at how fake she is as she's smiling and pretending to give a shit while the cameras are on. Look at the blonde woman as well as her husband in blue. They're not buying any of this. Most of the parents here have lost a child, directly or indirectly, as a result of exposure to online social media. For those that don't know, CBS is heavily left-leaning, and this interview really is for winning favor with America. And if you didn't know better, you would not see the manipulation and deceit in what Megan is doing. Harry and Megan are trying to give them, and parents like them, some place to turn for help. So essentially what Harry and Meghan have done here is used Arch Welfagazi public charity as the hub for where parents should go if they need resources and support. They also want to get parents' stories so they can take those stories and exploit that on their website. That's all that they're doing here at this moment. The partners that they have are the ones that are doing the actual work. Are we surprised? No. Oh my gosh, I'm so, Hello, so happy you're here. Thank you. Megan herself knows a thing or two about online bullying. Oh, you betcha Megan knows a thing or two about online bullying. Just take a look at her degenerate fan base, the Sussex Squad. But I'm going to be very clear with each and every single one of you guys. Keep it up. We know who you are. It's one person who creates all this account who is doing this, and they created a YouTube channel, whatever. Keep it up. Because the more trails you're leaving, the better for me. You don't know me, and you don't know what I do for a living, but you will find out. You try it. I will make sure I destroy everything. Your generation will not exist. Watch. So I'm just being very clear about that. Because I think, and I'm not, it's a threat. I'm not, you come after me and my family, I will do the same thing to you. And I will do it, and I'll do it better, and you'll be gone forever. Watch. And how do you do? And of course, her husband Harry is no stranger to that either. Then you have Megan in the background looking all creepy as if she's like producing this segment. You can see how stage everything is with cameras everywhere. Her husband Harry is no stranger to that either. Hey, did you guys know that Harry lost his mom? Or to unspeakable grief. The central topic is the loss. Megan is such a psychopath, man. That these families have suffered. Now, we all know that this interview was carefully scripted down to the last look, breath that Megan takes. So here Jane Pauley is teeing up, positioning this narrative of even though you haven't lost children, if this was a real unscripted interview, then the next logical question Jane Pauley should have asked, where are your children? But how Megan scripted this is to give the facade that they really are these parents who give a shit about their kids, even though they're flying off here and there without them. Stories that need to be shared mm -hmm. because the parents who are listening who have not suffered a loss think that they couldn't, but they could. They certainly could. 
And that's, I think, one of the scariest things that we've learned over the course of the last 15, 17 years that social media has been around, and more so recently, is the fact that it could happen to absolutely anybody. And here's the thing. Harry and Meghan are acting as if what they're doing right now is so revolutionary because it hasn't been done before. There are so many parent networks out there that focus on social media and online harms and resources for parents to use. So why does Harry come across as if what they're doing right now is so genius and original. It's not. Arch Wealth Fugazi Public Charity is looking to drive traffic through to the website and exploit these parents' stories. That's simply all that Archwell is doing right now. I mean, we always talk about in the olden days, if your kids were under your roof, you knew what they were up to. At least they were safe, right? <laughs> it's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are? I think we have the most recognizable uh, tagline in New York television in history. I mean, we always talk about in the olden days, if your kids were under your roof, you knew what they were up to. I swear, these two are the most unrelatable human beings on the planet. Does anyone believe that Harry has any kind of concept of what it was like growing up in America back in the olden days? No. This was clearly scripted by Megan. Megan told him to say this, and here she is watching him, making sure that he executes it correctly, and she's not pleased. And now they can be in the next door room on a tablet or on a phone and can be going down these rabbit holes. And, and before you know it, within 24 hours, they could be taking their life. The more these two open their mouths, the more ignorant they sound around parenting, which leads me to believe that these two either don't have these children in their care or they don't have children, period. But in any case, Harry's talking about the olden days. Well, how about in the olden days when cable television came out and children had access to R-rated movies or PG-13 rated movies? Parents knew how to regulate their children from seeing that type of content by saying, no, you do not have access or you can not have access after a certain time or you can't look at certain channels or what have you. This is no different. Parents need to put firm boundaries in their house. And I think we're losing some of that with some of these parents who are allowing technology and others dictate what their children see and what they don't see. And this is the problem. It's not about, oh, you know, well, parents really don't have the power to or have any control over it. Their child's going to commit suicide. And, you know, you couldn't have done anything about it because you didn't know any better. Shut up, Harry. Shut the F up. You can't tell this story, everybody. People don't understand. So now here you have a couple that come into the conversation who sadly lost their son to the effects of social media and possibly other things. I truly don't believe that social media itself would push someone to unalive themselves. I think there are a lot of factors that go into it. But in any case, they come into the conversation completely contradicting what Meghan and Harry just said. Remember, Jane Pauley had said, well, you know, there are parents who don't know what it feels like to lose a child. And here this guy is coming in to say, no, you don't understand what this is like. And this network is supposed to be set up for parents who have dealt with the effects of social media that were negative to their family and their children. That's what this is about. It's something Donna and Chris Dolly know all too well. Their 17-year-old son, CJ, died from suicide after what they believe was depression fueled by social media use. Your son had a demon in his bedroom. Yeah. I think so, yeah. Yes. We had no idea what happened to our son. I'd like to understand what is wrong with Megan. As this woman tells this story, look at how intense Megan is looking at Jane Pauley. Like, it's bizarre. Harry is paying attention to the woman, and Megan is, like, staring down Jane Pauley. You know, he had... A beautiful car. He worked and, and did that. He had a job he liked. Sisters but, that know, loved him. Loved Parents that adored him. Yes. He was happy. He was a happy kid. Now, I don't want to take away from the story because it's incredibly sad and tragic that this happened. But you have to look at, well, if he was so happy and he had all these things going for him in his life... But a few moments earlier, Jane Pauley had said that this kid had depression that was fueled by social media. Obviously, we don't know the full story, and I don't think it's as simple as him being on social media and all of a sudden he's down a rabbit hole and decides to unalive himself. It's not as easy as Harry is making it sound. He still had it in his hand, the phone. It's often impossible for parents or anyone else to see that someone was so deep in despair that they'd consider taking their own life. 
I think someone should make a note that Harry looks like the one who is in despair over social media. But this isn't about Harry, and this isn't about the parents either. This goes back to Meghan, of course. Meghan Markle has been there, as she told Oprah Winfrey in 2021. Look, I was really ashamed to say it at the time, and ashamed to have to admit it to Harry especially, um, because I know how much loss he suffered. Uh -huh. So now, as you can see, this piece has now gone back to Meghan and her plight while she was a member of the royal family. And in this Oprah interview where she lied her face off, she tells this story about wanting to unalive herself as well as her unborn child. But I knew that if I didn't Liar. say it, that I would do it. Liar. And I, I just didn't. I just didn't want to be alive anymore. Liar. So here's an example of Megan doubling down on this narrative that she had put out there back in 2021 of being suicidal. You see how they're crafting this narrative that Megan knows something all about the online harms of social media because she was there too. But let's remember that in the Oprah interview, it wasn't social media that she was like going to that dark place over. This was all about the racist, evil British media that were putting out articles that she wasn't reading, by the way. It was her friends and family who were going to her and saying, Meg, they're not protecting you. They're not keeping you safe. Then Megan proceeds to say that she went to the institution asking if she could go somewhere to get some help and essentially was denied and turned down. Then later on, let's not forget, Harry comes on and he tells a completely different story as to when he was told that his wife was having these kinds of thoughts and then proceeds into saying, I didn't know how to help her, didn't know how to support her. Meanwhile, he was with his brother and Catherine on Heads Together and had all the mental health resources available to him. So this was supposed to be Megan's darkest hour in her life. So her story changes again. In 2022 on Archetypes, episode labeled Crazy, she's quoted as saying, I mean, I think at my worst point, being finally connected to someone that, you know, my husband had found a referral for me to call, and I called this woman. She didn't know I was even calling her, Megan had explained, and she was checking out at the grocery store. I could hear the little beep beep, and I was like, hi, I'm introducing myself, and you could hear her going, sorry, who is this? So Megan was given a resource by Harry at her darkest moment. And on Oprah, both of them had said they had no place to go for help. Megan had reached out to the institution and they said, no, it wasn't possible. This woman is the biggest liar. So now she's pulling the story back up again to pull on the heartstrings and to play the victim. And you know that it was intentional because everything was vetted by Megan. So now Jane Pauley goes into asking this question. Watch how mechanical the psychopath is as she anticipates this question. You had uh, an, an experience that connects you to these, these families. And I see you touch your husband's <laughs> hand in just the way I knew uh, that you would be looking after each other. Jane Pauley says, I see your hand on Harry's knee. Notice during this sensitive time, Harry is not looking over at Meghan. He's not rubbing her hand and holding it, being supportive, because this is such a tough conversation to have. He looks incredibly embarrassed, and he knows that this is a big fat lie. Meanwhile, Meghan is smiling manically as if to say, yeah, I bagged a prince, cut his balls off, and they're in my bag right now. It reminds me of the same face that she did on Oprah if I went places. But mm. the connection that you have with people is they know you you had suffered too, personally. Raise your hand if you find this so gross that Megan is trying to make herself relatable for pretending to be suicidal. I mean, come on, Megan. I think it's more of Harry being uncomfortable and not wanting to talk about it because it's such a farce. Contemplating killing yourself is what suicidal ideation was. And I'm, I'm dancing around this because I can see you're uncomfortable with my even even going there. Do you watch this again? This gives me chills. There's something deeply disturbing about Megan smiling and giving this duper's delight at the end. Megan gives me serial killer vibes. Even going there, do you 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 
obviously Megan knew that this question was coming and you could literally see her getting into character, getting ready to give off the performance of her life in what she had practiced in front of her mirror. I understand why you are, though. I wasn't expecting it, but I understand why you are. Liar. What a liar. Seriously, Harry sitting there being like, I can't believe I married you. Saying that, oh, I understand why you were asking this question, but I didn't expect it. Bullshit. Come on, Megan. Because there is a, a through line, I think. And when you've been through any level of pain or trauma. How about the trauma that this woman inflicted on her own staff to which they had to quit and now are suffering PTSD? Megan, you might want to revisit the trauma and pain that has been caused. Maybe the reason why people are connecting with one another is that your abuse of others is bringing people together from both sides of the house. Now watch this bad acting and how fake this woman is and what she says. It doesn't even make any kind of sense. I believe part of our healing journey, certainly part of mine, is being able to be really open about it. Sure, you've been open about it, but you haven't kept your story straight because none of it has been consistent. Hence the reason why people don't believe what's coming out of your mouth. So next thing that she says here, listen to what she says. And I you know, haven't really scraped the surface on my experience. I haven't really scraped the surface on my own experience. Wow. What the heck have the last six years been about? We had the Oprah Wine Fest. We then had the Netflix mockumentary, six hours worth of her experience. Then we had the spare book, which half of it Megan was a part of. Let's not forget the books that Omid Scobie wrote, as well as the cut article that pretty much threatened the family again. I would never want someone else to feel that way. This moment was gaslighting to the next level. The audacity of this woman to say, oh, I would never want someone to feel this way. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, she's supporting and funding this online terror group who is not only bullying, but they're harassing and doxing people. I mean, you know, and here she is with the duper's delight, knowing full well that she's behind some of the most heinous hate campaigns against people. Megan, you're a real bitch. And I would never want someone else to be making those sort of plans, and I would never want someone else to not be believed. So if, if me voicing what I have um, overcome. And there is that delusion of grandeur. Megan, you didn't overcome shit. You're still bitter. You're still petty. And the man sitting next to you is so repulsed by your presence that he looks like he wants to crawl out of there. You keep telling yourself in the mirror that you are enough. Do it every day, whatever gets you through. But Megan, you're not fooling anybody. What does it say? Yeah. <laughs> this in-person gathering was just for the launch. What does it say? <laughs> this in-person gathering was just for the launch. The parents network will meet mostly online. But group facility. What do you notice about Harry? He looks pretty fed up with Megan. And the two of you, this is um it's a modest beginning. Look at this body language. Harry is practically falling off the chair, moving away from her. You know, it's not an army of parents no. yet. No. Um, but what are your ambitions? So we're at the end of this interview, and I want to say that I did cut out the 40 seconds because I think we've seen so much of that. But what's interesting is that Megan doesn't let Harry speak for the rest of this interview, and Megan goes ahead to close it off. And here's what she says. Remember, Jane Pauley asks, what are your ambitions? I think you have to start somewhere. I think the simplest thing mm. that anyone watching this or anyone who's able to make change and here we go. Megan completely deflects from what Jane Pauley asked her. She asked, what are your ambitions? She didn't ask, what about the people who are watching this or anyone who can make change? This is about you, Megan. Now is the time to talk about you and this project. But she doesn't do that, which leads me to believe another factor as to why these two are not good parents or even have children in their possession, because this answer does not make any kind of sense. So look at it through the lens of what if it was my daughter? What if it was my son? My son or my daughter who comes home who are joyful, who I love, and one day, right under my roof, our entire lives change because of something that was completely out of our control. And if you look at it through the lens as a parent, 
There is no way to see that any other way than to try to find a solution. The sick thing about this is that CBS paid for this garbage to be aired. Megan said a whole lot of nothing. The question was, Megan, what are your ambitions? What do you want to see happen to this program? What would you like to see in the future with your own children? This answer totally deflects the fact that you have children. And you didn't even allow Harry to answer this question about what he would like to see happen to this program. All right, Megan, if you don't want to talk about the Phantom Children and using this parent network as a resource to be better as a parent, then how about where you see this program in a year's time? How big do you want it to grow? Do you want it to go international? I mean, it doesn't appear to me at all that Megan seems invested in this cause aside from a financial perspective and to put on the 990 form when IRS turns around. Harry and Meghan are the two biggest hypocrites that walk this planet. Everything that they do is self-serving. And no doubt that these two got paid for this interview, even though Harry looked like he didn't want to be there and sit next to this vulture. He looked miserable. But here Meghan is in all her glory with the prepared questions that were given to Jane Pauley to give the performance of a lifetime, which kind of fell flat. No, it fell flat. Only a narcissist like Meghan Markle would exploit parents who lost their children to make it about herself on her birthday, all to feel better about herself. Talk about pathetic, sad, and quite frankly, in need of some serious mental help. Go get it, Megan. Seriously, work on yourself and scratch that surface because you definitely have a problem. I think many of us are seeing this and know this that Meghan and Harry are never going to apologize, nor will they ever admit that what they did was wrong. They truly do believe that they are in the right in every action that they took, even to the extent of the online bullying and how they treated people. My overall assessment of this is that there were no surprises here. Meghan was being Meghan and making it all about herself again. I think the frustrating thing is that You know, there are people out there that don't know the background to all that Megan has done. And that is true. And when they see it, you don't see all the things that we're seeing. And my guess is Megan is going to continue to double down on all these lies and position herself because at some point, I think she truly believes that these lies will eventually be believed and it become the truth. And it's people like me who they want to get shut down because we are the ones who are in the way of their propaganda from being effective on the masses. You see, when they shut voices down like mine from telling the truth, eventually all these lies that they have been spinning will become the truth, and we can't let that happen, and that's just my opinion. But what do you guys think? As always, I will be back with more content, but until then, please be safe, and I'll talk to you later. Bye! I was such a fraud.